Welcome everybody, Mike Montague here, Director of Community Engagement at Sandler. And uh, my guest this week is Jody Williamson from Sandler in Chicago. Uh, Jody and I are gonna be talking about ChatGPT for salespeople. These are specifically ChatGPT prompt writing strategies that salespeople can use to make their job easier and to win deals. As we mentioned, we're doing this live and Jody's gonna use ChatGPT uh, for the pro version live for you and show you some of these prompts. So uh, we don't know what's gonna happen. The AI is unpredictable and it's making it up as it goes along. So that's our only choice here too. We didn't think it'd be very interesting to show you recordings of stuff we already did or, or text output of, of prompts. We wanna actually do it with you. But we're going to have a, a lot of fun. We're going to talk about um, how it can make your job easier and help you sell more. I also wanted to talk up front that we did an earlier webinar about AI and will AI replace salespeople and all of the different AI tools. And that one is available at sandler.com slash insights. If you want to go watch the recording, uh, uh, Jordan Ledwin, who's on the line here, he's going to help answer your, your questions. Jody and I talked about all of the different AI tools available here in 2023. But uh, this one is diving deep into ChatGBT. So we got a couple of things to talk about here. Uh, first, if you're not familiar with ChatGBT at all, uh, GPT, and you didn't, maybe you're thinking ChatGPS, it's, uh, it's generative predictive translator. And what that means is it's an AI tool that is using a computer algorithm to predict the next right word in a sentence. And so it's a conversational algorithm that creates uh, human-like conversations, but it doesn't have actual intelligence. It's just uh, like a weather forecast predicting what most likely the next right word would be in a sentence. So if you think about like uh, your text messages, when Google or uh, Apple pops up your next the next word and it's guessing what you're writing or in an email, you start writing Tuesday and it fills in the rest of Tuesday or puts the date in there for you. The AI has gotten a thousand times more powerful than that now. So it can predict the whole rest of the conversation if we want it to. And that can be really interesting. But they are predictions, which means they're not necessarily accurate. <laughs> they're just predictions and guesses about what you think the next right answer would be. But ChatGPT is blowing up. If you're not using it, it's the fastest ever internet uh, you know, or app to get to uh, uh, 1 million users and got to 100 million users in just two months at the start of the year. So if you are not using ChatGPT, your prospects and your customers are. There's over 100 million people in there and it's a completely free application. You can go to OpenAI and uh, make sure that you can uh, just use it for free. Start trying it. Uh, Jody, any open thoughts on or opening thoughts on what we need to know about ChatGPT? No, I mean, I think you and I talked about that there are policies that companies have regarding using ChatGPT. So uh, we'll leave it to everyone who's here to decide uh, and check with your people inside about the, the the concern of putting client confidential information into ChatGPT, which is an open system, which could go out to the world. So um, I don't like to put anything, I mean, I don't put anything confidential in there. There's nothing today that's going to be it, that that even close to that, that uh, kind of threshold. But I would uh, be careful and check with your internal company policies because once you get in the habit of using this, you start putting things in there and you might catch yourself like, whoa, I probably yeah. shouldn't put that in there actually because the world could possibly see that. So I think that's important too, Mike. Yeah, every response you type into ChatGPT is training it for the next person who asks a question. So uh, sort of like, uh, again, in a Google search, if you search for Sandler training and you find the Sandler.com link, the Google algorithm knows that you stopped searching, you found what you were looking for. And so the next person who looks for Sandler training, they're going to recommend those same websites. Same thing with ChatGPT, whether you like the answers or not and how you interact trains the next question not even the next person who comes up a day later, but the next question that you get in the sequence. So you don't want to give it private information or that becomes instantly public uh, and stuff there. But there are some things you can do to level the playing field with the buyers, to use it for research, to use it for content creation, for personalization. And we like to say Sandlerization uh, because if you use it with the Sandler concepts and philosophies, we think it really ups the, the game. It, it makes the answers from ChatGPT better, 
but also ChatGBT can make Sandler <laughs> salespeople better when we com combine the two. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We do have a lot of people here today and it's publicly available on YouTube. We did hit our max limit. So if you have any coworkers who are trying to get in here, uh, you can send them over to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Sandler Worldwide, and uh, they can watch the live broadcast. But Sandler is the world's largest sales training organization with over 250 locations, 27 countries. I think we're at 19 languages now, uh, about 500,000 hours of training annually. We've trained over a million salespeople over the last 50 years. Uh, but this is our, I think, our greatest asset here is because we have so many locations, we have over 400 trainers, we're collecting best practices from around the world. So if our trainer in Taiwan uh, comes up with a cool chat GPT prompt, he can share it with everybody in the network. And Jody and Jordan and I have been collecting the best practices from everybody around the network over the last quarter or so for chat GPT. And we're going to share some of those with you today. But if you, if you don't figure it out today, we don't have very much uh, time. We can't get very far in your personal growth process. You can always reach out to a Sandler trainer. Go to Sandler.com, click on training location. You can find the one closest to you or reach out to the enterprise team if you have more than one location. Because in the next 55 minutes, we can give you a lot of awareness about what is possible in ChatGPT. We can give you a little bit of knowledge about how to do it, and we are going to apply it. We're going to do some real live tests. We're, we're using real bullets, as they say in the Three Amigos today. Uh, we're going to apply some of it, but chances are we can't get you full ownership of ChatGBT. You can't become a ChatGBT master by hearing Jody talk about it for the next hour. So if you need help, don't hesitate to reach out. And when we have this many people on the line, we know some of you have never heard of ChatGBT. Some of you have been using it for months. You're leveraging it already in your sales or there are AI companies in here. So uh, some of you may have been building your own AI apps and stuff and you're already at mastery level. We're gonna try and start low and then speed up really fast and get to mastery level before the end of the hour. So let's start with some opening attitudes here. And Jody, feel free to chime in too. But for me, saying the rule number one really applies. It With AI, sales is still a conversation between human adults to uncover the truth. So even though we can use ChatGPT, doesn't necessarily mean we should. Or just because you can make an automated robot that uh, dials a thousand phone numbers at once doesn't mean you should spam the heck out of your, your client list, right? We still need to focus on being our human selves in sales calls and connecting emotionally because what AI can't do is connect with human empathy and emotion and do active listening and, and respond to the, the buyer in the way that they need at the moment. And I think the last thing here for me is... Um, also with that that spam stuff is that you don't want to sound like a robot. So if an AI writes your script, if you're not careful about sandlerizing it and putting it into your voice and, and delivering it with empathy and tonality, you're going to sound like a robot reading a script written by AI. So we're going to help you write scripts today. <clears throat> oh, do not read those off the screen. <laughs> Memorize them, get that information in your head. And when you go on the call, be your best self, bring your personality to the call. Jody, anything you'd add here? No, I, I think that it, it, there's all this fear of, uh, you know, losing the human element of selling and, and what AI doesn't know is empathy. Uh, AI can't really do the human stuff that that is a big part of selling. And, and I view this as, you know, AI stands for artificial intelligence, but I view it as like amplifying intelligence for salespeople. It's just like an extended brain. It just makes me smarter. It helps me brainstorm and, and prepare better the things we're going to show. But I think that uh, sometimes people go down the path pretty quickly. Of It's a robot. It's going to do all these other things. And we still have the human element of selling, at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, and, and that's how I view it as, as a way to amplify my effectiveness and impact on the world through using the technology. All right, uh, Jared, I hear you too. I know he wants to skip a uh, skip ahead and jump into it, but we have a couple, one more caveat here, I, I think for me, which is that we want to leverage technology to engage, not to hide. Every time a new tool comes out, sometimes wimpy salespeople use it to hide behind it rather than doing the hard conversations of, of showing up in person or calling. So 
you know, we've heard horror stories of leaders firing people over text messages, or um, we wimp out and we send an email rather than calling that that prospect uh, that we know we we should have and stuff. And so I do want to give a, a little bit of a caution here, an upfront contract with everybody that we want to use the AI tools to make our human conversations better, not to have less human conversations. We want to automate the stuff that maybe humans are not great at. And then um, we want to uh, use the humans for the part that they are great at, having those difficult conversations. Jody, any final thoughts here on, on upfront contracts or other things before we jump into it? No, just the hallucination aspect. You'll put things in. If you do two fact-based of a, a query, you might get something weird. It's really bizarre. And like I said, you take it with a grain of salt. And when you know it's clearly, you know, fact-based stuff is not so good in it. So that's why we're going to focus on what we're going to today. Yeah. So here it is. Top four ideas for how salespeople can leverage chat GPT right now. If you have any other ideas, mm -hmm. feel free to share them in the chat or the, the YouTube comments. Ideation. I love it for brainstorming. I constantly say, give me the top 20 ideas for our next Sandler podcast, <laughs> how to succeed podcast, or give me top 20 um, titles for a webinar on how chat GPT can use salespeople. The uh, you know subject line of this one may or and copy for the landing page may or may not have been influenced by ChatGPT. Um, preparation, pre-call planning, research, getting to to know the industry. We're going to cover a lot of that today. Creation of stuff. It can write a first draft of your LinkedIn message or your sales email super fast, and then you can just edit. Uh, so it can write and, and type faster than most humans these days, and it really helps with the blank page effect. You know, when you're getting that writer's block or you just don't know what to say, ask ChatGPT <clears throat> how to get started. And it is really great at that part of it. And then number four, what I'm most excited about is the Sandlerization. We're going to teach you some of our reversing tactics and some of our Sandler philosophies that you can apply to stuff that ChatGPT has already written to really get it to the next level. So uh, what I'll say here is if you just ask ChatGPT a, a dumb question like, um, uh, and I say a dumb question, um, a simple question, like write an email to my prospect selling blank. It's going to write an okay email. It's going to take everything that exists in the world and give you like a probably a D minus answer. It's going to write an email for you, but the average salespeople are pretty bad. Over 50% of salespeople miss quota. So if we just take the average of what's out there on the internet, it's not going to be very good. If you write a, a more detailed prompt, if you say, write a message to a VP of sales in this industry and use some of these concepts and I'm selling this item and now, and I want this email to be five sentences or less. Now we can get that email to 80%, maybe a B minus with what we're doing because we've made a, a much more specific prompt. So these are the prompt writing strategies we're going to cover today. Number four though, and next level is sandlerization. What if we said, I want you to use the emotional words of concerned, worried about, frustrated. I want to end with an open-ended question to start a conversation. And I want to do it to an I personality style instead of a D personality style. And we ask those types of questions. Now we can use that script, customize it in our own words. And we got that A plus level uh, sales email still in record time, still in less than five minutes. And Jody's going to demonstrate some of that now. So Jody, are you ready? Yeah. So let's uh, let, let's just do the quick uh, difference between Google and, and, and chat GPT. And um, so let's do, uh, let's do a social thing outside of business. And, and I'm starting here because I think it's important to understand the difference between what we've learned with Google over the years and what ChatGPT does. So this is kind of the first level. Many of you are beyond this, like you know this, but many on the call are like, it's, it's kind of new. So Mike, are we, should we have a, everyone chat their dream vacation location? You just pick one and you tell me and I'll share my screen in a moment. Yeah, quick votes in the comments or chat. Uh, type in there, dream vacation. Give me one. Uh, I'm going to go Maldives. I saw this on, uh, I think it was oh, a Hold Netflix on, you got to give me special. something I can spell. How, uh, attend, oh, can you yeah, 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 here. Uh, well, it's dives. M-A-L-D-I-V. <laughs> 10 day trip. Okay, I'm going to share my screen a second. Maldives, yes. okay. And as we're going through today, a few things. I have, We're. we're I'll set the scenario up in a bit, but I'm going to do some typing on the screen live. I have some prompts. I'll just copy and paste so you don't have to watch me type everything. But when I am typing, we have to have an upfront contract that my 
My spelling is less than stellar, uh, but ChatGPT usually knows I can't spell and figures it out anyway. So let's go to here. So yeah. share the screen and uh, there we go. If you want to go side by side view in, in Zoom, you can drag this and make uh, or just do uh, the shared screen so that you can um, see the presenter view side by side and you can make this as big as possible so you can read the text. If you're watching on YouTube, make this full screen and, and jump in so you can read it. Here we go. Okay, so I did uh, plan a 10 day trip, right? And so I start with this because anytime we go to Google, we begin what's called the scavenger hunt. So I put a question in there and I get something like this. And now what I do is I start clicking. What's an ad? What's not an ad? Where do I take this? And I'm, I pretty much have to plan my own vacation based on whatever my prompt is going to be. So the challenge with Google is there's still a lot of work involved when we ask a question or we're trying to simplify our lives. And I think what happens with ChatGPT, I'm just going to copy this up here and throw it into chat. Uh, GPT, is that ChatGPT is going to give us a little bit different way to look at a 10-day trip. So here's the way a 10-day trip is playing out in ChatGPT. So instead of Googling, and I'm, I'm going to kind of move around during the day as it's typing, I'll kind of slow it down like I am now. So I just grab the screen. But this is the biggest difference is that it actually does the thinking and it knows my question. It gives me a much better answer. So think how long it would take for me to do this if I didn't hire a travel agent to help me with this. If I was self-planning a trip to get this level that to know on days seven and eight, I'm going to go to this, this place and I'm going to check out these restaurants in this town. So let's just understand that this is where this is where I think it, it it the rubber meets the road in the simplicity. It's amplifying our intelligence. And then I can say something like um, make restaurant recommendations by day. Okay, let's see what it does here. Okay, yeah, resort dining day one. It's telling us, uh, yeah, okay. Give me, let's give me specific rent. And I'm doing this live because this is what happens with ChatGPT. You have to keep asking questions. It's called prompt yeah. stack or prompt engineering. Okay. So, and tell everyone the history of our, uh, uh, the OGs of, of prompt uh, stacking, Mike. We just talked about that with questioning and Sandler trained professionals for decades. Yeah. And uh, the pro version is $20 a, a month. Once you get that typed in, Jody, I'll ask you about the difference between chat GPT free 3.5 and then the paid on four and, uh, and what we're going to do over there. See um, also, I love what, what he's typing in here is you can also be really specific with your prompts. So again, uh, Jody mentioned, you know, Sandler people and salespeople are kind of ninjas about this. You could say, what about recommendations for people who love barbecue from Kansas City or a 40 year old male uh, on vacation in the Maldives? And it'll become even more specific about the answers. But this looks great. And, and was, I mean, I could take it a lot farther. I want to go more with the business stuff. But the point is that yeah. By asking three or four questions, I can plan by day. I can, I can, I can refine it. I can say I like hiking. Rewrite it with more hiking, and I've done that. And give me the websites. Give me the web. Give me the websites of the restaurants. Put it in a table. There's all kinds of things we can do with that. But the bottom line is, it's about prompt stacking. And the rule of three plus in Sandler is something we've talked about for decades. Right? It takes at least three questions to get to the real issue. On a good and in a good sales meeting, we know the rule of three plus is really the whole Sandler approach. I have to ask multiple questions to get to the real issue. I want you to think of, of, of chat GPT the same way. You've got to ask multiple questions to get to the real issue. So let's- And we, let's, we should, uh, I was going to ask you about pro, but also, um, again, these can be wrong. So just because it did, did give us an answer doesn't mean that it's necessarily accurate. We still want to research- real place. This stuff. Yeah, these have links, so they're probably real restaurants <laughs> here, but um, it can hallucinate. You know, I don't know what the actual number of accuracy is, but let's say 90% is not 100% accurate, yeah. right? And the 3.5 only has information up to 2021. So if you want current information, you do have to go to Bing or the uh, pro version, the, the chat GBT. Well, actually, actually 4.0 will still give you a lot of that 2021 stuff. Yeah, it'll, it'll still kick yeah. it back. Um, okay, so let's go to four. So, so that's 20 bucks a month more. I mean, I think it's a pretty good investment, but you decide. Um, so 3.5 to four looks like an incremental difference. It's only 0.5 difference. But if you look at like what's happening, it's eight times smarter. So there's a big, it's a, it, 
it's mis it's uh it's a bit deceiving that the what looks like uh half a point it's it's way different so i'm going to use four um just because it gives better answers but you can certainly do everything i'm doing today in 3.5 you just got to play with it a little differently so here's the scenario um we're going to okay so we're acting as salespeople today and we're going to do a number of prompts that i will set up and then we're going to dive into it and it's going to play out live as Mike said, it's unpredictable. It could crash. It can time out. If that happens, we'll just deal with it because that's what I do all day long when I'm playing with it. It's some, it just throws you a curveball. You just deal with it. Okay. So that's our upfront contract. Um, here's the scenario I decided to pick. Um, I know we have multiple industries on this call today. And, um, and so I just picked something as a sample today, but I don't want you to, when I give it to you, say, well, that's not my industry. It's it's the thinking behind what I'm going to do. You fill in the blanks for your business. So I, I, I thought of picking something that we all deal with, which is which is some kind of packaging that we get probably on our front doorstep from Amazon, a corrugated package, some kind of cardboard box. Um, so we have some clients who do that. Most Almost everyone here doesn't, but I'm going to use that as a scenario. So just for the next 40 minutes, Act like you sell cardboard boxes, corrugated packaging, and that's what you're selling, okay? So here's your scenario. You're a salesperson. You're trying to grow your territory. You're trying to grow your business. And let's say your company has a sweet spot in, in boxes that people put, I don't know, water bottles in. They put uh, pens. They put, um, you know, possibly electronics in. But let's say as you're have your sales head on. You're like, I got, I got to expand my business. I, you know, part of my role as a salesperson, I got to grow my territory. And you say, you know what? I know that we don't have a sweet spot in it, but some of our competitors are pretty good at selling corrugated packaging boxes into the snack food industry. So here I am, a salesperson. I'm in prospecting mode. I want to expand my territory. I go to ChatGPT to help me think through it. So let me give you the first prompt. But what I'm going to do is I have on the screen you can't see here that I'm not sharing. I have some prompts so that I didn't have to type them all in today. But all the ones I'm going to share with you were just a result of me playing. I started December 8th on this, November 30th that came out. So I got in relatively early, but it's all self-taught. So if this is a bit intimidating to you, just understand, you just put some time into it. It's a pretty quick skill to develop. It's not like most technology that has a pretty high a high, pretty high learning curve. So let's do scenario, it. Let's, that's the scenario. Here we go. So I'm going to start with this one. Tell me about the snack food industry. I don't know a lot about it. We specialize in other industries. I want to see what ChatGPT will tell me about the industry. Okay. So you can see, and anytime you're opening a new market or you get a lead from your website and you're like, wow, that's an interesting industry. How do I get myself up to speed quickly in that industry so when I make my call, I can have an intelligent conversation with them and ask them better questions? And that goes, Mike, to the sandalization, right? Not only are we asking chat GPT questions, but when we're in that meeting and we get that lead and we do the follow-up we prospect, I'm going to be able to be at least up to speed on understanding their business. I don't want to say, tell me about the snack food industry. They expect that walking in, right? So I need to have a pretty quick education. If I try to do this in Google, just like travel, it's kind of a mess. So I'm learning things here like, okay, um, healthier options are important in the snack food industry, uh, convenience, innovative flavors, sustainability, those are all things. So now I say to myself, okay, who are some of the players in the business? I kind of want to understand, I understand the business a bit, but I want to understand like who the major players are. So I'm going to go in here and put that in the prompt. Who are the major players in the industry? Let's see what it says today. I've asked it this question multiple times and I get different businesses and you'll get this too. It'll kind of blink sometimes and it'll usually have this little um, disclaimer. Hey, as of 2021, I can give you the information. It's not current. So it's still not caught up. So if there's some brand new snack food company that's come out since 2021, it's not going to show up here. Okay? So I like this to just once again, get my head in, okay, what like what is this industry? Who are the major players? And even if, you, I mean, if you're watching this, you're a completely different business, you've heard these names, right? So there's nothing really surprising here. But once again, when I start playing in this, I get a quick education. And as I'm reading through, I'm like, okay, interesting, ConAgra, Hershey, I know that one, General Mills, Kellogg, okay. So we got cereal companies in here, we got candy companies. 
And, and so we got all kinds of different snack foods. So then it ends. And then I go to put a little bit more of my sandalization hat on. And I'm like, okay, if I'm going to target this business, I'd like to know a little bit more about some of the challenges this industry is facing. We could call those pains in sandal, right? But let's just do a quick education and see what ChatGPT says. Um, industry, let me put industry in here. Okay. What are the biggest challenges facing the snack food industry? Okay, let's see what ChatGPT says on this. Oh, you know what? Let me do another prompt. I got another prompt here. I got a better one. Okay. Oh, this is good. We got network error. <laughs> That's what happens. I, remember I told you, yeah. Mike, that would happen? There it is right there. Yeah. Most of the time you okay. just hit refresh or try it again just and it, it starts going again. Which now, is great. You can open another tab. You open another window. And and like I, like Mike said, we want to see you to see this play out and see how we play with. So it's a perfect example of what will happen. That will happen if you do 30 minutes, 45 minutes, you're going to get stuff that times out or gives you some bizarre answer. I have found that instead of staying in the same uh, chat with chat GPT, if you open a new tab, it kind of forgets what it learned, which might have taken it down a path of the wrong learning. And it goes down this bizarre hallucination. And you're like, what is this all about? Okay. So now I know some of the challenges of the industry. Let me get a little more specific on this next prompt. L to control V. What are the biggest challenges regarding their corrugated packaging? Okay, so corrugated packaging plays a significant role in the industry. It's widely, you know, because it's cost effective. Okay, now I'm getting some more, more specifics on the industry with their packaging specifically. And once again, we're selling the box that can show up at the store when you get there. You buy the Frito Lays, it's got all the snacks in there and the big thing at Costco. It shows up on my front door. But now I'm starting to get a feel for okay, if I am going to approach a business, at least I have an idea of some of the areas they might be challenged with. Okay. So Mike, we're getting a sandalization piece, right? Now, yeah, it's uh we're we're getting uh interesting pain indicators, right? Not necessarily pain questions yet, but indicators yeah. of problems that we could solve for them. But if I'm but but if I'm if I'm prepping and I'm in sales role, I'm like, okay, I gotta think through. I'm not gonna do features and benefits, I'm not gonna go down that path, I'm not gonna call and say, look how great our company is, and you should, right? I'm gonna go and, and lead with pains. So now let's say, okay, I want an idea of some of the people in the Midwest. I'm in Chicago. You know, and so I'm like, okay, I have the Midwest territory for my core guided corrugated box company. I'm going to target some snack food companies. So let's see if I can find some mid-sized regional companies in the snack food. Because I I'm not going to call on Mondelez and Mars and all that. Those are those are the big ones. Like we're we're a small corrugated box manufacturer. So I I want to get like some smaller ones that are probably going to be easier to get in. Less complex decision makers. They're not enterprise level selling, but these are very specific. So here I am on the screen and I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. So let me go down to, we got Sheer Foods, Old Dutch. And I, I, and I start looking, I'm like, okay, who might want to target here? Now, let's say I do this one. Let's just, let's just do this. Tell me more. Old Dutch sounds cool. Uh, about number two. Now keep in mind that prompt. You can ask it this question. Now, I might be proved wrong because it's not predictable, but most likely I put, tell me about number two. And it's going to tell us more about Old Dutch. Okay, so once again, you have to already, you have to pay half with your uh, partner if you if you buy an Old Dutch snack. Uh, is that, is that is oh, oh, see, you're way ahead of me on Dutch. that. The, yeah. the dad right. the dad jokes come back in right. So, <laughs> um, like you do at Summit, this is good. Um, so so I like this once again. I don't want to call and you know my opening is tell me about Old Dutch. Now I could find this fairly well on their website, but we know websites, you go in there, it's promotional, you trying to find out like the history of a company, a little bit more of what they do. And look what I'm learning here. It's like, okay, they're in the Midwest, they make pretzels, popcorn and dip. They've got a, a it looks like a branded thing called Dutch, Dutch crunch kettle chips, right? But what I'm able to do is educate myself quickly. Um, now, let me go to another prompt. Let me let me do this one. Let's get into Okay, so here's where we're at. Snack Foods found a company. Now I want to take a step back and say, okay, I would like to know a little bit more in the snack food industry who makes decisions when it comes to corrugated packaging. Okay? So let me control V that one. 
Okay, so now I'm getting farther down the path. I'm like, okay, I understand the industry. I have a target and I could do this for all of these, right? But I'd like to know a little bit more about who to target at a snack food company when it comes to their packaging. I already know how to target when I'm selling. We have clients who have water bottles and pens and all this other stuff, but maybe it's different in the snack food industry. So you can see it's telling me, I mean, obviously, we're all in sales. Procurement is probably part of the process, right? It also says that ops. Okay, that's interesting. So let's see what it says here. And, and I'll highlight some things we go through because I'm educating myself, right? The ops team needs to ensure the packaging integrated in the production process. Okay, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Quality assurance team. Maybe I wasn't thinking prior to reading this, that was a call point for someone to target. But now I'm like, yeah, maybe, maybe I do that. Because once again, sandlerizing, we know three wide, three deep, wider, deeper, higher cast of characters. I'm not just calling procurement. In fact, that's the last person I want to call, right? I am going to target multiple decision makers in multiple departments initially on this pursuit, as opposed to starting in one place and hoping to go throughout the organization. I'm, I'm reaching out to a bunch all the same day with a similar message. Well, a, a similar message, but tailored to the pains in their department. Okay, so let's actually, let's let's look at that. So it gives us what, seven? We got seven there. We got seven departments, right, Mike? So now I say, okay, to the point I just made, let's see if we can figure out a little bit more about what some of the pain points for each of those departments might be regarding their packaging. So now I'm going down further down the Sandler path, right? No feature benefits. And so now I'm seeing here, the, and I'm gonna slow it down here, okay? Procurement, uh, they might face issues with sourcing and cost. Okay, that kind of makes sense, right? I kind of know that every company has that. What about this here? Um, so the ops team, Needs the packaging to integrate seamlessly production process issues can arise in packaging. Okay. Quality assurance teams need to ensure that the packaging protects and pr product header. Okay. That's not bad. All right. Now, let's say we're like, okay, now I'm getting in the weeds. I would like to know a little bit more. Are you pain points? Yeah, pain points. Okay. So now I'm like, okay. I'm wondering who I should be targeting in, in these departments. And I kind of know maybe there's a manager or a director, but as you said, Mike, it's about ideation. It's about brainstorming. It's like, I'm probably limited in my thinking. So let's ask ChatGPT to say, give me five titles in each of those departments. And let's go to the, let's see what it gives us. Okay, the specific job titles can vary company to company. Okay, now, now I'm really going down the path. I know I know the industry. I have target companies. I know the departments that influence a decision in what I sell. I have some pains in each of those departments. And now I've got a I've got multi, I got five decision makers in each one of these departments, right? And I prompted it with give me five titles of decision makers in each of those apartments. Now let's say um let me just throw this prompt in here because this is what I do when I play with this. And like you said, Mike, it's hands-on today. So um, um, rewrite to only three titles per department. Because I'm like, that's confusing. My brain can't get around seven departments and five in each one, right? They got what? 35. So let's narrow it down a little bit. More. I love what you're demonstrating here too, Jody. I wanted to jump in a real uh, quick and just say that the best thing about ChatGPT is it can pretend to be anybody. So you can say, explain it to me like I'm five, or you can say, uh, rewrite it for a D personality. That was the too long, didn't read. Or you can say, uh, rewrite this in the style of Chris Rock. If you want to be entertained while you're reading these, like it can pretend it can give you whatever you want. You just have to get better at giving it instructions. Yeah, we did it uh, not too long ago. He said, give us, give it to us in the name of Samuel Jackson. And it really couldn't answer because the it, it won't swear, it won't use curse words, but it, <laughs> it, it tried to, right? <laughs> it yeah. Good. So um, okay, so let's let's look at I'm going to do sustainability. So we have a sustainability manager. Okay, so now we'll get, now we'll really get in the weeds, and we're going to say, okay, let's let's come up with what our 60 second commercial or as we call it, the Sandler pitch prompt sequence, 
Like, how can we create basically a pain centered message so that when we make a cold call or we send an email or we send an in mail or whatever our approach channels, maybe a vidyard, um, whatever channel we're using, we can start narrowing it and saying, okay, now that I have titles, let me use ChatGPT to help me create a commercial or, or, or a pitch prompt, right? So let, let's an elevator pitch, right? Let me see if it can help me with that. So let's just do, yeah, sustainability manager. I think I think I thought that might be an option that might come up. Yeah, we did. So here's my next prompt. Okay. And so we we've 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 kind of labeled this the Sandler pitch prompt sequence. So there's four prompts I'm going to give you that will help you with any commercial. So I'm using this scenario. I know many of you are already on ChatGPT now playing along with me, but putting your stuff in there. And we'll, and that document that we have has that mic anyway, right? We have all the prompts in there. The the, the one that we're going to be given at the end, the uh, twenty different prompts. Yep, yep. It's um, all in the PDF. Oops, I got the wrong one there. So let's let's take that away. Let me make sure I copied this. Okay, copy. There we go. Okay, let's try this. Okay, so one of the prompts you want to start using, and just make a side note of this, is start things with act as if, right? So I want ChatGPT to act as if they are a sustainability manager at a snack company. And I want to know what the challenges or concerns that they're having with their corrugated packaging. So let's see. Now, this is where it goes a little tricky. You never know what it's going to give me. But let's see what it says. Okay, as a sustainability manager at a snack company, my primary role is to see, see how it's doing first person because I said act as if. So it's writing it like, okay. I am this AI, I'm acting like a sustainability manager. Here's the things I'm kind of concerned with right now. Because my job is to make sure that when we're buying our corrugated packaging, that it's recyclable and that it doesn't use the wrong adhesives and that it is sustainably sourced. And it, I mean, all this would be in a... Now, I don't know enough about, I mean, I actually know enough about sustainability managers and packaging to know that these are pretty good. Now I could ask it more, give me, give me five more, give me three more. I'm not going to do that here, but that would be prompt stacking. That would be the rule of three plus. So let's just pick a few here. Okay. So we got all of these. Now, if you're going to make a cold call, you're not going to get all this on a call. You're going to typically want two or three pain points for your for your opening, for your for your commercial. So let's just say, I don't know, let's do uh, condense, do this. Condense to numbers. Well, let's see, let's pick, um, let's do adhesives. That sounds kind of cool. Three and four, okay? So let's condense it. So now it's helping me refine the pain points. So instead of having eight pain points, which I'll never get to in a call, I just randomly pick three. So now it's giving me these three and it's re reformatting it here, right? So that's kind of cool. Um, and, and the other thing that you touched on, Mike, is that I view ChatGPT as 70 to 80% of all my writing, but it doesn't have my personality in it. And sometimes it's worded a little too, I mean, it's pretty good about wording things conversationally, I have to say, but overall it's it sometimes can be a little dry. So that's one, once again, where sometimes you'll take it out of ChatGPT, get it into a Word document or a Google doc, and you'll play with it outside of this environment. Because sometimes you just don't- We did have one, one question there, Jody, which I wanted to highlight is maybe you can pop up your history of the past searches and there's a share link now in ChatGPT. So if you wanted to share this with your sales manager or your sales team or uh, brainstorm this at the next meeting, you just click the little share button. It's that one that looks like an upload button next yeah. to the one we've been doing. You want to send the Maldives trip to your uh, partner, okay. copy the link, email it out to your uh, travel partners, and boom, um, you'll see that it, it gives them a new prompt in ChatGPT. So all that is saved and you can copy and paste the uh, information right out of there. So if you just highlight it all like you would in a website page and paste it into a Word doc, you can do that there too. I just put it in the chat. I hope it doesn't, I hope everyone doesn't sign in and crash the whole thing. So Jordan, you're ready just in case? I don't think it'll do that. <laughs> um, okay, so we have four prompts in the commercial, right? We have the, what are the, what are the basically the issues the sustainability manager has? The next one is narrow it down to what, two, three, and four I picked. Okay. So now I'm going to ask it to sandlerize it even more. 
And I'll read before I hit the enter button. I'll, I kind of want to read off what I'm what I'm posting here because I love doing this. I've been playing with this for a while, so you can see if you if you've been in Sandler a while, you know this already. Is that you typically want to start with a word track like I have down here, right? Hey, when we talk to sustainability sustainability managers at snack companies, they tend to share with us some challenges they're they're facing with their corrugated packaging, things like. OK, so that would be a beginning of a script or some word track that I might want to practice. So when I'm on the call, I'm ready and then ending it with a Sandler type question. Hey, any of these challenges uh, you're facing or things you've been thinking about, right? Challenges you're facing is pain, uh, concerned about is future based pain. So we've got both of that working in there. So let's let's play with this. OK, let's see what happens, see if it comes up. And this once again, this is one of those tricky ones. You, you're not really sure every time. OK, that's not bad, right? So when we talk to sustainability sustainability managers at snack companies, they tend to share with us some challenges that they're having with their corrugated packaging. You know, things like, and I've got pain A with a little detail, pain B with a little detail, pain C, and then I've got the end question. Hey, Mike, any of these challenges you've been facing or thinking about? Okay, so those are three prompts, right? Act as if, condense to two, three, and four, and then put the beginning and end in. And I'm going to do one more, one more prompt here. And I really well, like you're copying it. that, Jody. I wanted to highlight that um, this is a great way to get started, but you can also um, you can shorten this. You can you can edit from here. We don't have to completely use the one that they are. There's a million different ways that we can where we can go from here to customize it. Jody's gonna gonna show you one, uh, but also we can always just start right over, but we, we're creating our sales playbook right now. So I, I wanted to highlight that for everybody that this is something that you can do maybe even just like once a quarter with your team is yeah. you get together, you research the buyer personas, you craft a new 30 second commercial, you try it or with chat GPT, you can do this once a day and you can create a new commercial and AB test it with your team and see if you're getting better results on the calls than you were the day before. But Anything in your sales playbook, a 30 second commercial, or you're saying, I have a speech to write uh, in front of a group of sustainability managers, it can help you write your speech for you. There's a lot of different things that we can create. We're just using the example of a 30 second commercial right now. Well, and and like right here is a good example. I, I think that everyone on this call should come up with their own words that they could insert in this third prompt. So if you don't like this word track here, just come up with your own and save it as a prompt. I, I have a document where I have all my prompts in a master document and I learn a new one someday. I, I just, I, I just, I'm building it every day, pretty much. I'm adding something into it. So if you don't like those words, come up with your words you like for your commercial word track, right? Um, and then save it as a prompt that you can use as a go-to. So let me, let me do this last one. So there's one other, I think this is the furthest sandalization will take the commercial is that if you've learned the commercial creation process in the past in Sandler, you've learned about um, emotional words attached to pains, like frustrated, worried, upset, concerned, things like that. Fudwaka is sometimes is the acronym you might have learned. So let's go and put this last prompt. This is prompt number four, which is rewrite the script. And prior to number two, say some are concerned with. Prior to number three, say others are frustrated with, and then prior to number four, say others are worried about. So we're using the, the uh, concern, frustrated and worried in this example. Let's see if it, how it does in its unpredictable way. Okay. Some are concerned with use of adhesives. Okay, I like how it bolds it too. There's other ways to prompt it to bold. We won't go there now, but there's different ways you can give it a prompt that'll shorten this, like you said, Mike, and bullet point it and prompt it. I don't really like this. Um, this is a good way to learn it in paragraph form, but I think it's harder to um, harder to get your head around on a call, but that's not bad. We've been doing some timeouts here, like talking about it, but I know those on this call, if you have those four prompts and you just do prompt, 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 it takes less than five minutes to create a commercial. And think how cool it is, and I'll scroll up here. Think how cool it is you could block out a morning and you could come up with commercials for three people <laughs> in seven different departments and have a playbook, certainly in a morning, probably a couple hours. That's where we're at, right? Um, 
Let me just try one. Now, if we can uh, slow this down a little bit. Okay, yeah, you're going to do some of this. We had questions in here about, that seems like a lot of text, especially after the pain bullets. Uh, yeah. So you're going to format it in Markdown, but then try that. afterwards, can we play with some different personality styles or uh, shorten it or make it simpler? Yeah. I love the try explain it. it like I'm five one. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's see how it works. Okay. So I like this bullet point form and then let's, let's shorten it up. And this is where, like I said many times, I don't know where it's going to go, but we will say shorten it up. So let's just do, I'll put that prompt in while it's writing it. Um, shorten this up and uh, let's just say shorten it up. Let's try that prompt. Shorten this up. Yep. Great notes in the chat too. Remember you're reading these like you're a human. So you just use this to write the script and then you go and you do the call by yourself. Also, if you need to check sources or make sure it's accurate, or if you're posting this on a blog or something, you do want to make sure you're not plagiarizing other people or that you note that it was partially generated by chat GPT yep, because yep. there are problems. But if you're using this for an internal sales script, uh, there's no reason why you would have to be worried about that kind of, of stuff. But there can be issues with plagiarism. And then there are AI bots that detect plagiarism. And then there are AI bots that take the text generated and make sure it can't be detected by plagiarism bots. So you yeah. can keep rewriting it over and over again. And it gets a little bit ridiculous. But we're talking about salespeople having one-to-one -one conversations. So if you write a whole book with it, you probably need to cite your sources, do a lot of fact-checking and other stuff. I wouldn't do it well, that way. And I, I love the, the shortening up. I, this is way better, right? I mean, it's, it's just too yeah. wordy the other way. And as as we've taught commercials for years, right? This, it's not like I read it. I just use it as a way to kind of get my thinking down. So if I'm on a word track, I say, you know, and and still others, Mike, they're frustrated with sustainable sourcing. You know, they're having challenges with the, with that, and they're they're just they're just striving to find the right materials and to responsibly source it, and they're just having a hard time with that. I mean, I would use it. I'm not going to read it like there. And I just didn't read it. I just, I looked at it and I just kind of played with it. That's all it's meant to do is get that kind of that writer's block that, that, that blank page effect, as you called it. It's like, it gets it to that, to that place. Yeah. So can we try uh, a couple of other ones? Let's try, um, can, can we try objections? That? Can we try the objections we might get on the call or what were you going to say? Um, all right, yeah, we, we can do that. We'll we'll circle back, but I, uh, I we, and we're gonna do a role play here too. So stay tuned. We Let's still got more uh, okay. cool stuff we're trying to get to. We got fifteen minutes left I'll to do make sure we get them on. But okay, uh, love this one and um, different personalities. So what I was gonna say is, you can say rewrite that script uh, as a uh, witty, humorous um, salesperson, or you can say rewrite it to a D personality, or you can say. Um, you know, explain it in simple words, like uh, I'm a fifth grader and all of that will rewrite it. So here you go, Jody, with the objections we might get after this. This is pretty good, right? So I want everyone to think about your world, your call points, and you do act as if, fill in the title, at A, fill in the industry. What objections are you going to have? I sell, fill in what you sell. And this isn't bad, right? So imagine doing a practice session with your Sandler trainer or internally, and you're like, okay, let's just work on these, okay? When they say, hey, what steps have you taken to minimize your carbon footprint? What are we gonna say? Are we gonna reverse it, dummy up, negative reverse? Do we have a better answer that's not really in any of the, what are we gonna do? So once again, a really good way to get the thinking down of what might they throw at us in the first five minutes of the call that we would wanna be ready for. It's pretty cool. And then we can take these and type them into ChatGPT too, right? And say, how would I answer as a salesperson? And it might not be a good one, but we can start brainstorming. How would you ensure the sustainability of your materials, oh. yeah, right? No. And, and we can start brainstorming responses if we don't have a good answer. Yeah. And you want to do the role play? Do you want to, do you want to take the screen for that? Because I'm probably, um, it, it, I don't know if we mentioned this, but when you have ChatGPT4, which is the one you need to role play, if you want to do a live role play, um, and practice your muscle memory on asking questions. Um, you, you, in 4.0, you have 25 prompts and it cuts you off and you got to wait three hours to get back in. So um, I, I, I would start the role play here, but I want, Mike, you're going to start it because if I try to start it, it's going to it's gonna go down the wrong path. Are, are you going to do a role play or are we, gonna, we have time for it? Uh, yeah, I'm going to do the uh, role play here. Sorry, I'm uh, sharing the wrong screen. I was going to uh, jump into 
uh, the notes here. I was copying and pasting links for everybody else. Uh, again, if you have chats for uh, questions for Jody now, he has time to look at the chat. Jordan has been doing a great job of answering them as we go along, but if we missed any, we'll make sure that we uh, answer these as many as possible as we uh, can before we wrap up here. Uh, get, recordings are available. If you go to sandler.com slash summit, we'll be doing these again in a virtual summit and at our live summit. Jody did a talk about the future of the sales experience in our past summit. That's a recording. We did an AI webinar with Jordan uh, last or two months ago in April. That recording is available at sandler.com slash insights and the prompts. I know a lot of people are, are uh, watching on YouTube. If you go to sandler.com slash chat GPT prompts, you can download all the stuff that we have been doing today. Okay, here we go. Here's my uh, GPT-4. Here's our role play prompt. And it says, role play a sales call with me. You play the prospect. I'll play the salesperson. Give me time to respond to each one of your questions. I sell corrugated packaging. You're the sustainability director at a snack food company. Let's keep the role play to less than five minutes. And I'm going to start. I'm Mike Montague from Sandler. Does my name ring a bell? Uh, and how about I take uh, 60 seconds to tell you why I'm calling and you can decide if we talk any further. That's a pretty standard uh, opening. And I'm kind of a big deal. Uh, so a lot of time people do uh, know my name. They just no, say go for it, right? Yeah. They say no. And it says, uh, sure, go ahead, give me your pitch. And uh, I'm interested to hear why you're calling. And we could uh, copy out those uh, links, right? Um, so what should we say here? Folks, I, I, you guys help me out. Yeah, throw it in the chat. Like, so, you know, you kind of sandlerize this. What would you do when they say, uh, give me your pitch? Of course, we don't want to do a pitch. So what's our word track? What do we say next? Yeah. Have some kind of uh, I mean, a little commercial there. You want to do it? Just do a brief commercial here. Like you to reduce uh, waste. Oh, yeah. What were and... we? I'll tell you what they are. Um, find sustainable sourcing and reduce their carbon footprint. Just do that. To and reduce their carbon reduce carbon footprint. footprint. Any of these any of these issues for you? That'd be a classic commercial. Now, if if and while you're typing it in, for those of you that want to use this as a role play role play partner to practice your muscle memory, you can have your commercial copy and paste that you put it in. But I really like this as a way if you're committed to that kind of real time stuff. It just it gets it gets the muscle memory down, right? You start okay. What could I have asked differently? And then you can review the conversation. And say, oh, I didn't reverse that word. I should have clarified what that word meant, right? Okay. So what do we have here, Mike? Uh, he did great. He said uh, we're always looking to reduce waste in our carbon footprint. So I'm open to ideas. That sounds like a pretty uh, simple pain funnel. But he said, please go ahead and share some specific details about how your company does this. So I might have to, you know, do the stroke repeat reverse uh, yeah. question here, right? And say like, uh, I am happy to, to, but first, can I ask you a couple of questions about what you've tried? Yeah. Or you could do questions, uh, what's your biggest, because I'm really giving you your biggest challenge, you know, but try that. Of course, feel free to ask questions regarding sustainability. Ask what the biggest challenge yeah, there you go. And uh, packaging, let's see. Here. There you go. And I like typing with a thousand to... people watching is one of the hardest things I've ever done. Again, uh, upfront contract, it's selling, not spelling. Um, so the biggest challenge is pass. minimizing. Okay, so here's why I really like role playing is now we can start dissecting it. And because it's not real time, I think it's a really good way to learn. It's like, okay, what could I reverse there? Where's there some mutual mystification? What would my next question be? You know, we've made efforts to explore various options, but striking the right balance. So we could we could go to a pain funnel question. We could say, can you give me an example? Try that one. Can you give me an example? And this, if, 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 if everyone here knows your nine pain, pain funnel question, that's, that's like number two or... Or so uh, Tara made a know. great point. ChatGBT is being nicer than most of the prospects. Oh, so nicer. I've done this where I've said, let's Pretty repeat hostile. the role play at the end, but let's do it as a high D personality that is reluctant to set a meeting and it will play a tougher prospect for you. Oh yeah. Um, I don't, I don't need more rocks thrown at me while I'm mowing though. So I'll take the easy role play. Uh, okay. What do we got? Yeah. And so 
And, but that's a really good point. So if you prompt it and you add in there, be a difficult prospect or uh, or um, don't share a lot of information, make, make the salesperson uh, ask questions and then reveal information, it will take that. It's not perfect, but if the point is to get me to think, okay, what's my next question? If nothing else, to practice the pain funnel, tell me more, be more specific, give me an example. How long has it been a problem? What have you tried to fix it? How does that work? If you start playing with that, you'll start, it, it's like slowing it down. And when you slow it, it's like slowing it down to speed it up. It's a really good way to learn. And, and you can do it on your own time. You, just, you play with it. Then you can redo it because you missed you missed a reverse or you missed a question. Um, let's see. Give me an example. What do you think it's costing you in regards to product integrity? Okay, so you skipped a, a few questions. That's good. Yeah, like this. What makes sense for us to set up a? Oh, you're going for the appointment early. I'm going right for it. Yeah. Uh, Oh, sure. there you go. Now we got an objection. Oh, this is good. You this get is to, good. I some thought, information before. It was so nice up to this point. I figured you'd be like, yeah, come on in, dude. So, which, <laughs> ne which, which like, never happens, right? Um, um, yeah, so sure. I think you guys get the point. We're, we're doing the uh, the role play here, but we can we can type in here. Can we restart? Can you restart the role play as a I D? personality in disc and be more reluctant to talk or to share. Okay. This will be fun. Now it's playing. Oh, there you go. It's just writing the whole thing for us. That's usually uh, what it does. Okay. But look at the, look at its responses. Now, like I appreciate your call, but I'm pretty busy. I don't know if it's worth my time. Can you give me a quick overview right now? That's probably something you're more likely. Right. Can you send me to information hear on, on with my current supplier? Uh, and the answer are. is, yeah. What's this about? Uh, when you answer the, the phone, um, I don't have much spare time. Can you give me an example of how your packaging solutions have worked? Um, great. Here we go. Uh, 30 minutes. So even if you just used this script to role play with your sales team and you just said, okay, I'm going to play the prospect. You play Mike here. Let's role play this and just practice. You're going to get a lot of tonality. You're going to get a lot of um, examples here uh, of how to do these things. Right. Yeah. Um, and a lot of different uses that you can use in your, your day-to-day -day activities. Um, and if you're looking for Sandler band names that are, are funny um, here's my chat GPT one. Uh, for Sandler band names, the the Sandler submarine singers, um, no free consulting fiddlers. Uh, Hold on, negative the, reverse rock stars. The third party story troubadours. That's the name of my new band. That is it. Personally, my band is Nancy and the Seagulls, and we're on the uh, Kids in Cars tour. Uh, That's good. But, uh, so we're all right. We're final questions. Talking. Anything we missed, uh, Jordan or Jody, in the chat? Anything we need to show? All right. Are we gonna are we gonna hang out a little after? Are we doing after hours here or whatever we call this? Yeah, I'll go a, a bonus round. We need to stop the uh, official recording here in two minutes, but I want you to type in the chat. Now that we gave you some ideas, how do you see uh, ChatGPT AI affecting your role in the future? How can you use you use this in sales going forward from today? What's the best prompt out of our twenty that we've put in the chat? And don't forget. We're doing a lot of other events, some of these uh, free, some of them paid. The virtual summit will be free in October, October 11th. If you go to sandler.com slash summit, there's more information there. We'll have a lot of speakers talking about the future of sales and uh, the future of Sandler, what's going to happen um, in the, the years to come. And then next year in Orlando, we'll be back at it. Uh, Kurt says, act as if. That one is one of my favorites. I absolutely love that. As a sales manager, it's going to create uh, save a ton of time creating materials for your team and, and role plays and, and stuff, right? Um, great ideas. You can brainstorm all of that. Uh, recording is instantly available at YouTube. It'll be emailed out tomorrow with that PDF for the prompt. And uh, ChatGPT4 can browse the internet, so you can include links and other stuff. There's lots of other AI tools, too. So we only did ChatGPT today, but... There are AI tools that can sit in on your calls and then summarize the meetings for you and make notes 
or you can upload, there's a character limit, but you can upload transcripts of your meetings or even the Zoom call recordings. I can upload this to an AI tool uh, that will create it into segments and create short three to five minute clips and 60 second um, shorts for Instagram reels and other things that we can use for promotion. So there's all kinds of crazy AI out there. Uh, this is just the top of the iceberg. Um, happy to answer any of those as well. Um, Jody, I'll give you one more shot at it. Any final thoughts? Yeah, no, I, I think it's, it's uh, I'm all self-taught in it and it's, you know, it's a little clunky sometimes, as you can see, you're not, it's always, not always predictable, but, but just play with it and act like it's your 24 seven full-time brainstorming partner. It's your copywriter. It's your researcher. It, it, it's, it's on demand. And it, it, and I would recommend start a document for yourself, put your prompts in there and just make it a, a document you're always adding things to. And over time, you'll have this master list of prompts that work for you. We're giving you as part of that document, I think it's 20 that I think 20 that we kind of brainstormed and come up with that we've road tested, but yeah. You know, yesterday, there's a couple I discovered yesterday that aren't on the list because we had the list prepared before, you know, today. Um, <laughs> yeah. So every day there's something coming in, but it's pretty cool. And and when we, if you stick around, I'll do some um, as our after hours, our after show here, whatever we're calling this. Um, yeah. I'll, sh I'll show you how to write some emails, passing along a price increase, dealing with a price decrease request. I'll do like another, we'll do another 10, 15 minutes, something like that, Mike, for those that want to hang. Sounds good. I'm going to stop the re recording here, but um if uh, you have any questions, go to Sandler.com, reach out to your Sandler coach, find a location near you, or if you have more than one location, reach out to our enterprise team. We appreciate it. Remember, whatever you are, be a good one. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for joining us.